This is Class of Heroes for the Sony PSP, the PlayStation Portable. Everywhere just got a lot more sucked into dungeon crawling and leveling up your characters and building weapons. That should be their slogan for this game. I enjoy many of these titles published by Atlas, and the first time I saw this game I thought it was going to be saved by the bell mixed with an annoying Japanese cartoony anime. But I gave it a shot, and I'm, I'm pleased to report that this game is way cooler than the title or the packaging would lead you to believe. It's an enormous dungeon crawler with a lot of strategy involved in the gameplay and building your weapons and armor and leveling up your characters. It's a bit much for me, I'll be honest. I prefer Atlas's Dark Spire on the DS to this game, but they're very similar in that they're these gigantic dungeon crawlers that are very straightforward in terms of gameplay. You crawl through dungeons, you level up your characters, you fight monsters and find magic treasure and stuff. Dark Spire was very streamlined and funny, more reminiscent of an 80s style role-playing game. This one can get extremely complex when you get into the whole alchemy system because you don't just buy weapons, you can, but you also build your weapons and armor and clothing from junk and material that you find laying around in these dungeons after you've defeated monsters. You really need to sink a lot of your life into Class of Heroes just to keep all this stuff straight. And after a while you start figuring out, okay, I, fig I found a broken piece of wood and 16 shards of bone and three eyeballs, I can build a sword. Well, then it's not quite that silly, but uh, yeah, actually it kind of is. It's like two old shoes and 17 pieces of twine will get you magic slippers. I'm saying this like it's a bad thing. Actually, it's not. It's really cool. And if you have a lot of time to sink into one gigantic dungeon crawling role playing game on your PSP, this is the one to get. It looks like it would be goofy from the packaging. Like the art design is, is a bit sillier than the actual gameplay. And the title reminds me of Head of the Class or Saved by the Bell or some ridiculous 90s sitcom about high school students. The whole premise of the game is that these tunnels appeared all over the world many years ago and that you are training to be a class of adventurers, a class of heroes. And in a sense, the title has a double meaning because in constructing your team, you really have to decide what class of individuals what class or race of characters you want to have in your team. If that makes any sense, I just did a horrible job explaining that. You can have wizards and warriors and thieves and rangers and uh, they uh, can be drakes or humans, elves, halflings, diablos. Anyway, let's, let's take a look at some of the marketing material from Atlas because they do a far better job explaining this in far fewer words. Over 500 character possibilities, 10 races, 2 genders, 3 alignments, and 15 majors. And they claim that there's over 80 hours of gameplay in Class of Heroes. From what I've seen, that number sounds low. Seriously, it took me hours just to figure out what kind of party I wanted to assemble. I wanted a couple warriors, a few wizards in there, people good at healing. You know, what kind of warriors did I want? Drakes or humans? Then you can see on the right my characters Dig Dub and Rufus. Yeah, they're Diablos, and I like them because they're they're pretty tough, and they have like a magic fire breath that they can use during battle. I named the one girl Eight, splitting the difference between Seven of Nine. Here's a look at character creation. I'm trying to name my character Game Roo, but there's not enough letters, so it just came out Gamero, which is of course very similar to Gamera, the knockoff Godzilla turtle. He's not in the party, though. Instead, I went with easier names to pronounce, like Zibic question mark ox. Given the amount of detail in this game, I'm surprised that they don't give you any flexibility in designing what your character looks like. Uh-oh, time to concentrate. We're fighting nasal diggers and batsies. The enemy names and designs are creative. They're colorful. It actually adds a bit of charm to the game when you encounter a group of monsters that you would have never imagined in your wildest dreams. And they look like a group of escaped convicts from Fraggle Rock. 
Here we're going to build something. We're going to build a weapon using alchemy. In many of the battles that you fight in these dungeons, you win items. You must appraise the items before you find out what they are, and that gets a bit repetitive after a while. But it's, it's still interesting. I have a character that can do it with magic, so I don't have to pay for that each time. There's a recipe guide with hundreds of different uh, weapons, outfits, and things that you can build with junk and material that you find laying around in these dungeons. Littering is a huge problem on whatever world you're in. And people just throw garbage everywhere in these dungeons. These horrible monsters find it. You slay the monsters, even if they're friendly. Take the junk and material and assemble weapons with it or clothing or disassemble it into other things. It is addictive. It's a fun game. You know what? This is the kind of game that's perfect for a portable game console like the PSP. You can save frequently. In fact, you can save almost anywhere, anytime. So it's a great game for just playing five or ten minutes here and there on the bus, on the train, half hour before you go to bed. It's an extremely slick game. The whole presentation is nice. All the text is very easy to read on the PSP screen. The button controls work very well. If you like dungeon crawling role-playing games, this is one you should definitely check out. Given all the time I've played, I still don't think I've gotten into the heart of the story. I'm going through all of my classes and training missions and just, just starting to build my characters to some sort of respectable level of dungeon crawling mastery. Save! And then there's the whole affinity thing because different races don't get along and when you're when you're assembling your party you have to take that into consideration the more time they fight together they more the more they start to like each other and the more effective they are you have some uh, team team super magic spell things that you can cast anyway if you like dungeon crawlers role playing games you know the style you know the gameplay it's done well here class of heroes Yeah!